Medusa's Ankles is my third formal sort of short film and bringing it to Lincoln um, for its sort of first public screening and its premiere. The world of this hair salon that the film is set in, I hope it feels like slightly sort of otherworldly and theatrical. You're kind of in this pocket of this salon that the minute she steps into, it's like the outside world kind of fades away. What can we do for you? Uh, um, <laughs> how, how much is a cut and blow dry, please? 108. We can um, see you now. Oh. <laughs> okay. The film, I guess, builds into what ends up being this sort of big cathartic like release of hers at the end. And I hope people sort of go on that journey with her, you know, get sort of frustrated as she gets frustrated as a character and then can have that kind of quite dramatic release at the end. What I believe storytelling can do, which is, is kind of inspire and unite people and universal stories in the sense that you hope it kind of crosses different age groups and different backgrounds of people. The importance of Mansions for the Future and being in Lincoln is that, you know, it can be a collaborative, evolving um, program in the next three years. I'm excited to be here at the beginning of it. The beauty of having something over a long period of time is that it can evolve within the community, for the community and by the community. And it'll be interesting to see, like, in three years' time, how it's taken shape and, like, what's happened. I like things that are class. It's been a film that has been um, quite a lengthy process, in, particularly in the post-production. To actually be able to have a screening um, you know, in a public domain is, is really exciting. I think so much of the time film you know, gets put online and you don't get that same release or, ex or sort of celebration of, of it being complete. Of course people around the globe know you for playing the girl who won the Heart of Harry Potter. Um, tell me about your journey from acting in one of the biggest film franchise in the world to directing? Yeah, sure. I guess, you know, being in, in Harry Potter and being in such a huge scale of production was really where my love for not only acting but storytelling and then directing really came about. I was also so curious when I was younger and asking, you know, all the different departments while I was acting, like, oh, what does this do? What does, you know, this button on this camera do? And why are you setting a light like this? And, and that really was the beginning of my education in sort of filmmaking as a whole. Um, when I went to university, I, I went to film school and I studied, I ended up graduating in directing and writing. And then since graduating nearly sort of six years ago, I've just been making my own films um, in an independent way that's been really lovely in the sense of, you know, obviously you start with something like Harry Potter, which is almost like a back to front career. You're starting with these huge productions. And then you're, and then what I found is, now it's like working out where and how I want to make my films in, in the process that I want to do. So that's been really nice, just bringing it much down to a much smaller scale and working in a really, really collaborative way with filmmakers of my age. Medusa's Ankles will be my, I guess, third sort of formal short film and then other things I've done are, have been more kind of web series and music videos, so this is the longest film in terms of running time. Any sort of particular moment sort of during your Harry Potter career that sort of sparked that kind of, um, I don't know, idea in your mind that, wow, well, maybe I can actually be the director, I can maybe make films. I guess for me it was always, you know, we'd be we'd be doing we'd be doing a scene and and you'd come to an end of it and you knew that the director was kind of working out what they wanted to do next, if they wanted to do another take or they wanted to do a different shot or different things. And my favourite sort of game to play in my head was sort of work out what that they what they were going to do next. Can you tell our readers about Medusa's ankles um, and what they can actually expect from the film itself? So yeah, it's an adaptation of a short story by A.S. Byatt from a collection of stories called the Matisse Stories. And each story starts with a Matisse um, piece of art and that's what Susanna, the lead character, is drawn into this hair salon because of this um, um, Matisse nude that's hanging in the, um, 
in the salon wall and it's basically about her relationship and experience with her hairdresser and how an intimate relationship that can often be with you sat in the chair and them you know around you over the course of however many years of your life um, and it's really about that relationship and that kind of push and pull of the sort of power in, within that and essentially it builds and builds to her having almost kind of this sort of slight sort of breakdown in that processing of age that she is experiencing um, and yeah so I hope they kind of get a sort of window into that intimacy you know it's very about the physical space of the um, hair salon like it's the the interior colors and the design are very heightened and specific so i hope people enjoy the the set design and you chose to actually screen the piece in an actual salon in lincoln can you tell us about the inspiration behind that sure um i guess it's never um that was really Mansions for the Future's idea, um, specifically um, Claire Cumberledge, who is one of the um, the co kind of uh, creators of Mansions for the Future. And I really liked her idea because you know we always often see films in a formal space as a cinema, but to actually make it more of a site-specific um, kind of experiential um, way to watch a movie, I was really interested in. What advice would you give to people in the creative field who've got fuel to burn and mm -hmm. um, who are looking for a break? Yeah, I think I think to use Mansions for the Future over these next three years as a space that is this building to come and just be curious and to learn and ask questions um, from either the visiting artists that are coming to do their work or the, the workshops and programs, I think why I got into filmmaking or why I got inspired to do things was just my general love to sort of participate and I think that's just the act of participating is the beginning of something and you'll find hopefully like a strand of something that that speaks to you but you're kind of not going to know what that is until you sort of come and try try out. Do you prefer being in front of or behind the camera? Uh, I guess more I mean behind the camera I mean I love in the sense that I can tell my own stories. I love it in the sense of directing. I can be part of all the different uh, elements of filmmaking. I'm really interested in sort of the conception of the idea and following it through all the way to the end. And of course, Medusa Sankles also stars Jason Isaacs and Anna Schaefer, who are also in Harry Potter. Yeah. Too. And what was it like to actually direct your former colleagues? Yeah, it's funny. It's um, my first film. I also directed an actor that I had acted with. Um, and it's kind of, I mean, because I'm friends with them, it makes it sort of a fun and enjoyable experience. And they luckily had respect for me and they trust me to sort of get on with the, the sort of the job in a sense. And what about you? What does the future look like for you? Uh, just more um, filmmaking, really. Um, that's what I've been doing kind of undo all the time. Um, I really, it's now, it's the kind of the stage now where I'm stepping over into sort of feature filmmaking. So that's what I'm currently working on now. Which is cool. Yeah, yeah. Should we expect you uh, sort of acting again as well? Uh, at this minute, it's just my directing, which, um, you know, maybe I'll write something for myself to act in. And what would you most like to be remembered for? Oh, gosh. Um, I guess, yeah, I, I'm, I mean, I love stories in all sense of how they can be told, both, you know, in books, in films, you know, the oral way of telling stories, I think. If, if a story that I make somehow connects, some, connects something for someone or enables them to feel sort of less on their own in what they're experiencing, then I think I'll be happy. So Polly, thanks so much for joining us today. So first of all, obviously you're premiering this new short film mm -hmm. in Lincoln. First of all, why specifically did you choose this city to, to debut it? Sure, yeah. So the premiere is part of Mansions for the Future, this three-year programme that's um, happening here in Lincoln. Um, and it was Claire Cumberledge, who's one of, of one half of, of Mansions for the Future, that had previously seen the film of mine when it was in a... I guess it wasn't completely finished. Um, uh, it was sort of halfway through the post-production process. Um, and it was that screening of the film and seeing the film that she thought would be an interesting um, fit for the programme. And I think what really mainly interests me in terms of, I think, funding that's obviously given by um, the Arts Council in England is that it's really important, I feel, to take it outside of what can often be always fed into the capital of, of London. And I think, you know, for me, I was always so 
a lot of my inspiration and in in arts in general was having the ability to go see an exhibition or go see a play or just see things in a public domain and I think in a in a time where we're all sort of only experiencing culture through our phones or through a social way I think it's really important to have physical um, either buildings like we're in right now or actual screenings that we can experience like in real time so and often you can you know from my experience you can make a film and and you can put it online, but you don't get that same sort of full circle experience to when you actually get to show something in a public way. So it's really nice, just even for me personally, to be able to show it publicly. And obviously it's very unique as well, because it's being premiered in the hair salon itself. Yeah. What, what was the kind of idea behind that? Why did you decide to have that specific setup to, to show the film? Sure, yeah. So again, that was Claire of Mansions for the Future's idea, um, really to show it in a site-specific way that is happening here in Lincoln in a hair salon. The film itself is really about that intimate space that you can be in and are often in, and we all know. I think most people have been in the chair of a, a hairdresser and they've experienced that close feeling that you can get, whether you like it or not, with your hairdresser. And watching the film actually sat in a chair as though you were having your hair done um, is to really, I guess, emulate that feeling that is it being experienced in the film. So I hope people almost can have a sort of double layer in the sense that they're watching someone experience that intimacy with the hairdresser and almost they're experiencing it themselves. Um, yeah, and I hope maybe people who don't know about the programme or don't know about the film will just discover it upon it being in a public space, whether or not they walk by and they see something or they're going in there to have their hair cut and they, you know, they ask questions as to why this film's being shown. And do you think we'll see more of that in the future, this kind of, instead of just being shown in a typical cinema and shown in a typical theatre or anything like that, we think we'll see more of these kind of local based premieres of art, like dotted around the community, do you think we'll see more of that in the future? Yeah, I think so. I think people, I think people really want experiences and they want things to to sort of break the normal structure that we that we accept to see things in, whether or not that's in, you know, a physical auditorium or whatever that is. I think naturally things are crossing over more and more all the time. Sometimes, you know, you wonder if it dilutes things sometimes when they kind of cross over or it enriches things. I think everything's kind of like a hybrid of something now. Everything's always two things together in order to sort of hopefully pull different people into it, I think. Um, and I guess it's just like limitless as to how and where you can show films in different ways. Um, and I hope, I think, it, I guess it challenges people's imaginations to think outside the box, like literally. And you, you, you said on, on Twitter a day ago, you said it's kind of like this film is like an epic journey full of, full of lessons. So what kind of lessons did you learn along the way of, of directing and producing this film? And um, it's, it must have been great as well working alongside Jason again. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was really lovely to work with Jason. I think when I was specifically writing the adaptation of the story and I was thinking about, you know, people to to sort of who could possibly play this quite difficult role, you know, the sort of this love-hate relationship you end up having with this character of Lucian. Um, and when I thought of him, I just thought it would be so perfect and I was really excited that I was able to work with him in a different cap capacity and he's just... He's a very collaborative person. He loves asking questions about things and really getting to the bottom of the character. Um, and then in terms of, yeah, the epic journey of the film, I guess in it, it's definitely been the biggest scale of film I've made in terms of production. Like on, on the busiest day on set, we had 40 people cast and crew, which is the biggest I'd ever directed. And we built a set, which is like a whole other beast of filmmaking. I think everything I'd done, I just dressed an original location or chose a landscape. Whereas building something from scratch is just so, just a huge undertaking. And also because we built it in a set and it's meant to be like a hair salon on a high street, you obviously have people going by in a window. So we had green screen and, and putting in that green screen afterwards in post-production was what basically took this film so long to complete. Um, and why, again, I'm so excited to be able to share it publicly today because it has been a long process. And you, you've, you've said about this adaptation, obviously it's an adaptation of uh, a story by S. Byatt. What kind of drew you to that story as, as a kind of inspiration for this? 
Yeah, I, I was a fan of, of her um, work, um, A. S. Byatt. Um, this was actually the first series of short stories I'd written by her, uh, read by her. Um, and it was interesting because I'm, I mean, a lo I'm a lover of, of Matisse's work and this series of stories are called the Matisse stories. So when I saw the front cover of this book, I was fascinated, like what that partnership meant and like what was her interpretation of his artwork. And the idea is that each short story begins with a piece of Matisse artwork. That's what kind of brings the story into kind of into time. And for Susanna's character in Medusa's Ankles, it's her seeing this Matisse poster hanging in this hair salon that brings her in in the first place. Um, and I instantly, this world that A.S. Byatt creates, this very, very kind of heightened, textural, colourful world that she writes um, for specifically Medusa's Ankles was something I thought lent itself so clearly to film. And it's, it's, this kind of short film just kind of explores shifts in power and kind of women in middle age. What kind of drew you to those specific ideas? Yeah, I was interested in... A, the idea that this relationship that she's building with the um, hairdresser happens over the course of kind of a year. And to show that condensed progression of a character in a short film was something I saw as a challenge. And I was interested in her processing her aging during the course of that film and how it really is the physical space that suddenly changes from this kind of pink hues of kind of soft colors to this very gray, stark, modern um, world that she's in and how that change of her environment makes her suddenly see this aging process differently and suddenly be put under under this brighter light that she can't really escape and it's that that becomes the kind of catalyst to what already was probably building inside of her to then be this kind of literal sort of breakdown that she has in the salon and I was interested in how you could show that in a, in a short film. How can you show something that's such an overarching process that people go through in their life? How do you condense that down into one environment of one person? Um, and also the flip side of her understanding of beauty and, and Lucy and this character who's very kind of, you know, surface level, his understanding of beauty and like how you, how we can all have very different understandings of what that means. And, and you know, she's coming from a very kind of academic, kind of introverted space and he's coming from this very, um, you know, client base, kind of really indulging these people and indulging himself at the end of the day. And you've obviously had some experience as, as, as an actress in your own right. Um, so what's it kind of what's the change been like? And obviously, I imagine it must have been quite insightful to have that experience behind you when it comes to directing. How did the two compare? Yeah, I mean, everything you know that I know began with my experience um, acting. You know, obviously, working on such a huge movie series like Harry Potter was just this intimate um, and quick way to learn everything I could learn about filmmaking. You know, I was surrounded by people who was the best at their trade of, of what they were doing and it was just the most inspirational place to be. I was luckily very curious. I was always asking questions, you know, how certain things were being done and why they were being done. And that curiosity led me to realize that I wanted to study film when I went to university. Um, so yeah, it's been totally the foundation of everything of, of why I love filmmaking and and it's enabled me to, um, I guess now find my own kind of what where in that world of filmmaking in that sort of big sense what kind of stories I want to tell and I'm really in interested in these quite intimate stories. So in terms of um, kind of you've talked a lot about kind of the audience what you kind of hope audiences will take away from this what's kind of the big aim when you people come and see this film later on in the week? Yeah I think um, specifically to this experience in Lincoln, I, I really hope that maybe people hear about the screening tonight or the screen that's going to be happening in the hair salon as a kind of way into the programme for the whole entirety of the three years. Obviously we're right at the beginning of the programme, it only launched a few weeks ago, so it'd be really interested to see how this three years, you know, evolves and I hope people come and really sort of use use it for all it's it's here to do really you know whether or not that's participate in workshops or or um be inspired to um you know take up a, a practice in art or a story being in a public space someone might discover the film that 
would have otherwise never known about it because they've been in here just to have their hair cut and they ask questions.